on most of the week this week down there. So I ask you pray for him, safe travels, and uh, as he ministers to the family. And, uh, it's nice to be able to send one of our pastors that's right. to go down there to spend that time with him. That's right, that's right, that's right. How many of you brought your Bibles with you today? We're going to let the kids slip out. If you've got children with you real quick, let them slip out. We got plans just for them. They can't wait. I know all kinds of good things. Ernie and Chris and Stephanie and Jessica always have such good things planned for our kiddos. That is for sure. It is not a babysitting service. It's a time of learning, giving them great information. It's wonderful, wonderful. Slip right over here. Come on, yeah, that's good. Oh, they're going to go this way. you got a pastor over your kids too because uh, Ernie was a pastor for 17 years and he loves kids enough where he drives a school bus every day have you ever ridden a school bus you need to pray for Ernie every day <laughs> every day every day he's a great guy open your Bible to Ecclesiastes First off, the reason why I believe these two ladies got their jobs is because they came to me. This has been months ago. They made a decision. They said, you know what? We don't have money to tithe. It was right here on this, right on this, right over here. They came over to me and said, we don't have money to tithe, but we're gonna we're gonna tithe today. And I look at what God's done. I look at what God's done. We got a graduate over here. It graduates what? Commencement is next Saturday uh, uh, in Arlington. Yeah, it's in Arlington. Arlington. On 11 o'clock Saturday morning. Saturday morning, she's gonna walk and she's gonna graduate. And she's already got a job. I think that's really remarkable right there. What a what a miracle in that. But it's because they made a dedication. They said, you know what? We're gonna die even when they didn't have it to give even when they didn't have it to give. And I look, not many months later, and God's given two great jobs. I think it's wonderful. Here in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, and I'm reading from the KJV this morning. Janie Grind, who used to be, she was one of the very first Christian, uh, uh, contemporary Christian singers, wrote a song on this, Cast Your Bread Upon the Water. She and her husband Bill have been long, were longtime friends of mine, and she wrote this song, Cast the Bread Upon the Waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. And what they gave when they tithed is they gave. And they said, you know what? We're, we're seeing it go away. But God says, give a portion to seven and to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north or to the place where the tree falleth, it shall be there. He that observe the wind shall not sow, and he that regard the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that was with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. What he's saying is, you can't, you never know when the seed that you put in, in an offering, when that seed is going to come up. You really never know. It might come up in, in the means of getting a new house brand new house. They get to walk in their new house and everybody's settled in their new house. And they're going to have a great big house warming on what, the May 21st? Get my dates right before I mess up. I mean, I, I, I think about what, how God supplies and what God does. That's the miracle. You don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. Uh, you know, my partner got a great job. He loves his job. That's a blessing to me. Yes. It is. And Jeannie, you know what a blessing that is. Uh, talked about it last week. I, I think about everything and how every way God works in our lives. You don't know how he's going to do it. But I guarantee you, he will do it. He will do it. So I want us to take a moment this morning. And I want us to thank the Lord, you know what, that we have an opportunity to tithe. And you might say, well, what is a tithe? A tithe is 10% of... Well, you can tithe on the net or you can tithe on the gross. It depends on what you want to receive on. Do you want to receive on the net or you want to receive on the gross? That's up to you. But that part 
of your income is really not yours. That's God's. Then you can give offerings above that. And then even above that is sowing alms to where we give finances to take care of our community. So I want us to thank the Lord this morning that we have an opportunity to give our tithe, offerings, and so alms this morning. So join hands with somebody next to you this morning. Let's pray. And let's thank the Lord. You know what? That as we give, we're, we don't give because we have to. We give because we want to see God's miracle working power on our behalf. We have an opportunity to see Him do miracles for us. So Heavenly Father, right now, in accordance with your word, Father, we give today because we know that we don't know when that need is going to come that we'll have need to sow for but father you do so father we're sowing today we're not looking at the economy we're not looking at what's going on around about us because if we did we wouldn't do it but we do it today because you've asked us to do it so we stand in agreement with you that as we give good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, you're going to cause it to come back on us on every way. And Father, we do it now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. So if you're making out a check this morning, make it out to Crossroads. If you're putting cash in the offering, raise your hand and the ushers will give you an offering envelope. And I just want to thank you for, for growing up in God. Growing up. A lot of times people don't. They, they'll get... They'll get a teaching and they won't necessarily follow it. And then they want to know why later on they've got, they've got troubles going on in their life. It's because they didn't listen when they had a chance to listen. So just be, learn to be faithful. Be faithful in the little things. One day God will make you rule over much. I just love what Ken did. Ken, Ken said, you know what, I, 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 I don't know that I can tithe. I don't know that I can. I said, well, you know, you just do the best job you can do. God will see the rest. God knows our heart. He knows what we have. He knows what we have to put out. He knows what that all is all about. And I like over in Corinthians where it says that he gives seed to those people that sow. The more you sow, the more you make room for God to give it back to you again. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Amen. Don't we appreciate Pastors Johnny and Todd? I appreciate Johnny. Give Johnny a hand clap this morning. Pastor Johnny. I tell you, these two folks are faithful. Faithful. And uh, I appreciate that. I really do. How many of you brought your Bibles with you today? We're going to be doing some study along the way. We are completing a 12-step program today that we've been working on for the last several weeks. And uh, I'll tell you something, I'm, I'm kind of sad that it's over. I'm kind of sad that it's over. And I, I may, we may do part of this in Sunday school. We may have a second class downstairs and things like that. That's our goal is as Sunday school expands and uh, as we get through some of the, the classes that we think everybody should be a part of. And I will tell you, if you're not fully understanding about praise and worship, you need to come and hear Pastor Johnny these next two Sundays on that. Because you need to know what praise and worship is all about. And I guarantee you that if you do, you'll, you'll find yourself in a different frame of mind when you come in and you begin to sing and you begin to, begin to lift your voice because it will put you in touch with God like nothing else will. Well, first off, I want to I start off with, with a story about my kids. Uh, first off, my second oldest daughter is a doctor, and Mark and I have uh, a, a nice connection with her where vitamins are concerned. And uh, she is... a uh, a uh, holistic doctor as well as a medical doctor and uh, she practices that her practices in Phoenix and we had, we gave her a long list of things that we wanted and she combines our order with all the orders of all of her other patients and she puts it all in and, and fortunately for us we get to buy the med cost which is really really good the only problem is we have to wait till her order comes in how long have we waited now three weeks so we've been kind of anxious about that. But you know what? I think oftentimes our lives are like that. We put in an order for something and we want it to come tomorrow. How many of you want that? I mean, that's why I don't lie. I'm not a good person to order things online. Uh, you know, I, I'm really not, Jeannie. I, I, I like going and shopping and buying it right then. I was in Washington, D.C. 
Uh, if anybody saw the pictures that I put, uh, has anybody ever been to the uh, Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C.? It is absolutely breathtaking. And uh, you, if you didn't see the pictures, you need to go on Facebook. And if you didn't see them, it's because you're not a friend, you can friend me and I'll send them to you. But they are absolutely incredible. Banks of these trees are beautiful, pink and white. They are all you can see around the reflection pools all around Washington, D.C. are these. And the place is full of people. Uh, hotel rooms are at a premium. And if you don't know what I mean, a premium, a Holiday Inn room, uh, just a regular Holiday Inn room, uh, just under $400 per night there. Because the prices go up as the honey, as this Blossom Festival comes in town. Uh, if you're used to staying at better grade hotels than that, uh, the Marriott, where I normally stay, my company wouldn't put me in because it was almost $700 for one night. So I stayed in a no-name hotel for $86, if you can imagine what that would look like. <laughs> It was kind of scary. It looked really nice that you got on the inside, then you realize that they haven't done anything in the hotel since probably the turn of the century. <laughs> but it was okay. What I was talking about my kids is that sometimes, you know, when we put orders in from God, we, uh, how, how many of you are impatient when you order things? I know I am. I, that's why I don't order things well. George, you like that too? I, I am not one who can put an order in and wait very long. And, but I'm doing better. I'm really doing better. Because I'm, I'm learning that patience is a good thing. I'm, it's learning that, that patience is a good thing. And I know that when we've got kiddos, uh, sometimes we want them to grow up because we're tired of telling them the same old thing. We want them to grow up and get it. How many have ever been there? I know I have been there. I have been there this week with some, of, not with my, with my own physical children, but from some of my church children, I've been that way this week. Some of some of the kids that I've grown up in church here have not grown up like I wanted them to grow up. So I'm having to exercise patience in a pastoral means, but that's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get over it. But when my kids were growing up, I remember coming in from the garage, we had a short little hallway that came in from the garage, that, short little hallway that at the end of that, we had a little place where they could hang up their coats. Well, that was never enough because when they got four girls They've got more than just coats. They've got their sweaters. They've got their school sweaters. They've got all this stuff. They had all their shoes, and they had all that stuff. So I had a little neat little rack built in where they could come in and put their little shoes in and stuff like that, you know, kind of hoping that they would carry on some traits from school that they had to do at school. They'd maybe do that at home. Well, that, we ripped that back out because it didn't work. But next to that was a doorway that went into the breakfast area. And you've probably had these too, where when you were kids, when you were growing up, they would take a ruler and they would mark you along the side and you'd go back and turn around and see where you were last month and where you were this month. Well, we had a great big piece of tape on there where we could mark who, you know, who was where. And it was amazing that some of these kids, of the four girls, it would seem like all the other kids would really grow up and then one would just kind of get stuck there for a while. Then suddenly they would burst and they would do like this, you know. And Step 12 is about like that. It's about measuring our spiritual growth. And I know for some of us, I know for me, when I started this journey on this 12-step program, you know, I, I thought I was doing really pretty good until I realized that my progress really wasn't as much as I really wanted it to be. And after having been a born-again Christian since I was a child and growing up in church and being in ministry, you would think that you would have had some pretty good growth until you start to challenge that with, with some of the steps that we've gone through, of, of like keeping an account of, of the things that, that you don't like, your, your character defects, and really taking a look at those. And, and then how are you going to progress through that? And what are you going to do about those? And, and then naming all the people that through those character defects that you've hurt and injured, and then going back around through and and going to those people and telling them that you're sorry. I mean, suddenly you began to think, you know what, I thought I was really doing pretty good <laughs> until suddenly you began to measure yourself against your own expectations and you find out that you've fallen really